Hi, it's The Wire. It's July 9th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, when I was a kid, in the NFL, before the uh, NFL Players Association started to get some power, what they would do is they would have an A-level talent. You might remember John Elway, first pick in the NFL draft. And what they would do back then is they wanted you to know that Elway was getting paid. And they would say, hey, John Elway has signed five one-year contracts. Right? He's paid for the next five years. He signed five one-year contracts. Folks, I need for everyone here to understand what that means. Right? What that means is if John Elway gets injured the first year, the team would come to him and would say, Hey, the contract you signed for the year after this one no longer applies because you can't honor your end of it. Right? What five one-year deals means is that that second year, if you can't play, the team, of course, can decide not to honor the deal. Now, what I want folks to understand is in boxing, from time to time, you're going to hear News that sounds great, makes the sport look lucrative, right? Has you wondering why professional athletes are venturing off away from boxing into sports like baseball, football, basketball. We're hearing that top rank offered Shakur Stevenson a five-fight deal for $3 million a fight. Wow, that sounds great. Right? We're doing the math and we're thinking, wow, five times three, that's $15 million. You're thinking that this is similar to, let's say, the deal Bryce Harper signed in the big leagues. Right? Or the deal Paul George just signed with the Philadelphia 76ers. You're thinking, look, you know, surely if Shakur Stevenson goes out in the first fight and gets hurt, and let's face it, this is a sport where Ray Leonard got an attached retina, right? Where Errol Spence had retinal issues. Great fighters can have injuries, even in fights they've won. Leotis Martin beats Sonny Liston, finds out he has an attached retina, this is the late 60s that ended his career. Right? You understand. Guys like Joe Fraser, Harry Greb fought fights blind in one eye. Those are great fighters. Well, I need for folks to understand that the way many of these boxing contracts are structured, if a fighter gets hurt his very first fight, Let's say you go out there, you're trying your best, and then you end up with a detached rectum. Or you have bleeding on the brain, a hematoma. Right, folks, you're not getting paid for most of these deals, four fights, two, three, four, and five. Right, that five-fight deal is actually a one-fight deal. Let's go one step further. There are contingencies involved, right? You don't have this in basketball, right? Paul George's deal, he blows out a knee the very first game. He's getting paid for the duration of the contract, right? In, in boxing, you don't have that. So understand, one of the contingencies that these publicly announced multi-fight offers half is that you've got to win. Right? Of course, Stevenson right now unbeaten. Unbeaten. 
That changes if Shakur Stevenson loses his next fight, doesn't it? His market value then drops. These promoters are taking substantial risks in putting on events. Right? I've seen some events fail big time. Right? I've seen champs who can't fill an arena. So understand, you don't have the market value to the promoter if you lose your unbeaten status and then of course you lose your ranking by losing that second fight in a row. And so understand, many of these big time contracts are a bit illusory. Many of them. I'll give you another example. Canelo had a big deal. We won't name the promoter. I'm not here to throw bricks through windows. But Canelo was supposed to get some guarantee, right? Let's say $35 million or $40 million a fight. The promoter was all on board with that. But the numbers have to add up. The promoter wanted Canelo to fight a guy named David Benavides. That would be guaranteed box office. That would create enough money where Canelo could get his fee. But of course, Canelo knows that Benavides is a bigger man than him. Right? Benavides is a guy who, you know, isn't even the same size as Canelo. He is on the way in, right? But otherwise, the feeling is that Canelo is a smaller guy than David Benavides. Canelo didn't want to fight Benavides. Now, both Canelo and the promoter were repeat players, right? Now, I'm using the word promoter gratuitously here because, of course, we're really talking about blurred lines in boxing. You have managers and they're working with promoters. Sometimes the promoter is king. Sometimes the manager is king and hires the promoter. Right? Welcome to boxing. Understand what happened. We'll just say the promotional group reached an agreement with Canelo. No hard feelings where they said to him, look, if you're not going to fight David Benavides, then there's no way financially that we can meet your contractual minimum. So they split up. Folks, it's not the first time in Canelo's career where Canelo, one of boxing's cash cows, an A-lister in terms of bringing in fans, this isn't one of the first times in Canelo's career where he had a contract with a guarantee. And of course, worked out a deal with the promoter where he went his way, the promoter went their way. Right, so these long-term deals, they work in the NBA. They don't work in boxing. You know, what you should do when you hear about an offer where some promoter is going to pay any fighter, Shakur Stevenson or anyone else, $3 million a fight for five years. Sounds impressive, right? Hits the press, everyone looks good, right? The promoter looks generous, right? You need to ask yourself, what are the contingencies? Is this amount guaranteed if Shakur Stevenson comes out, gets knocked out, his first fight, right? A guy who beat Evander Holyfield, John Ruiz, fought, I believe it was David Tua, and got knocked out seconds into the fight. It happens to skilled fighters. 
Well, the question is, what happens to the rest of the contract? Right? And so, you know, I need for folks to take what they hear with a grain of salt. Let me also say something else, too. And I said this before, and there was blowback from subscribers. That's okay. I'm an adult. I can handle it. I pointed out that there isn't that much money in boxing. Now, sure, a Canelo and Anthony Joshua, uh, a Floyd Mayweather, a Manny Pacquiao, a Gervonta Davis, a Ryan Garcia. Okay, you got some guys who hit seven figures, some eight figures for fights. Right, and Anthony Joshua, you even have different countries competing for his fights. Right? Okay, great. We get it. Folks, those are needles in haystacks. Now, if you've just been following the NBA trade market, right, you know, for example, that Derek White makes something like $19 million a year. Right? Many of you are scratching your head saying, Derek White, who's he? He plays for the Boston Celtics. Understand, he's not the highest paid player on that team. That's now Jason Tatum. Right? He's not the second highest paid player on that team. That's Jalen Brown. Right? Go down the Celtic list. He's not even the highest paid guard on that team. That's Drew Holiday. Right? That's how much money is in the NBA. Derek White's getting $19 million a year, at least. And, of course, those deals are guaranteed. You hear multi-year NBA deal, you understand Derek White could tear his ACL the very first dribble. And he's still getting paid. Right? The rehab is on the team. Right? Now, Shakur Stevenson is an Olympic medalist. Let's get it clear here. He's an Olympic medalist. He is the guy who the people in Newark came to see last weekend. Sure, there was an undercard. We call it the undercard. Right? But you understand that Shakur Stevenson, who had on his trunks, I am that guy, was the guy the people came out to see. Right? Everyone's going gaga over a five-fight deal that was supposed to net Shakur Stevenson a whopping total of $15 million over five fights. And I'm sure, have no inside information, I'm sure the contract was loaded with contingencies. The $15 million Shakur would have gotten over five fights, and make no mistake, the expectation would have been that he was going to be fighting against A-listers. Right, Gervonta Davis, Lomachenko, two future Hall of Famers. Right, possibly Teofimo Lopez. Right, Liam Paro. You know, big names, guys with belts. To get that $15 million. An amount Shakur was going to be paid over five fights. That's less than Derek White's annual salary in the NBA. Right? When you factor in the idea that Derek White's getting that money, as opposed to Shakur, who has to win to get that money, right? The $15 million over five fights is really what the promoter gets out of the deal. Right? They get the promise of having a superstar talent for five fights for $15 million. There's no guarantee the fighter is getting the $15 million. Right? The fight before this last one, Shakur got booed. Got booed by the crowd. Let's talk about another secret. I know a lot of people are watching this video and they're saying, Oh, you know what? I'll take $3 million for a fight. I'm sure there are a bunch of MMA guys who are saying $3 million? Hell, that's a lot of money to me. And I'm a professional prize fighter. Maybe I should move over into boxing to get $3 million a fight. 
right? You know that MMA mindset, they fight the best. So you tell an MMA guy, look, you're going to have to fight the Gravante Davises of the world to get that $3 million. They're like, hey, sign me up. Right, but here's the wrinkle. You might not get a fight a year. Right, understand, sure, I can promise you $3 million a fight. The question is, how often am I actually going to have fights for you? Let me tell you, from this seat, I was hot and bothered over an announced fight involving two guys I think are Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers, right? Eris Landy Lara and Danny Garcia. I heard they were going to fight. I thought, hey, this sounds good to me, right? Some of their management group overlaps, I thought, okay, they can make this fight. It's the same people in the room. I thought, wow, you know, from my seat, my analysis, you can have yours. It's a free country. I thought, wow, you know, this is a sharp shooting jabber mover, Laura, against your prototypical mid-range hooker, Danny Garcia. I thought, wow, boxing is giving us a gift here. This is a great fight. All I needed, all I needed was the date of the fight. And then, of course, that fight never happened. <laughs> right? You know, I'm engaging in that long-time boxing tradition of waiting for a great fight. Right? This is what the sport does to you. You're waiting for Canelo to fight Benavides. How long were we waiting for Manny Pacquiao to fight Floyd Mayweather? Right? We're still waiting for... Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua to fight. Well, I'm one of those waiting for this Erislandi Lara Danny Garcia fight. Now here's the thing, Danny Garcia the last few years has fought less than once a year. That's what these contracts do to you. I've watched boxing a long time, so I remember Danny Garcia fighting a lot of big fights. I remember Danny Garcia beating Amir Khan when we thought Amir Khan was all that. Right? You remember those fights. The question is, how many young fans today remember Danny Garcia? I was on box rec. Right? I thought, you know what? Maybe I've missed some Danny Garcia fights. Right? Maybe the guy is fighting boxing's an international sport maybe he's traveling places and having fights that just slip the media outlets that I read then of course I looked up Danny Garcia and they had the word inactive next to his name as I make this video I don't even know if Danny Garcia who gave interviews where he was talking about how excited he was to be fighting Eris Landy Lara I don't even know whether Danny Garcia is still active Imagine if that happened to Shakur Stevenson. You sign a deal, you say, hey, five fights, I'm getting $3 million a fight, what could possibly go wrong? And then a young guy in his 20s finds himself outside of the ring for extended periods of time. Right, understand Derek White doesn't have to worry about Celtic basketball games being scheduled. His contract doesn't say, when the Celtics play, we'll give you $19 million. And he doesn't have to then think, wow, are the Celtics going to actually play a lot in this upcoming season? No, basketball guys understand there's a schedule. Derek White knows when his team's going to play. He knows he's getting the money. Folks, you don't have that in boxing, do you? Right, so don't get me wrong. Like many, I like to keep track of purses. I like to find out what the gate was. You know, you see all these fighters. Think about how lopsided the sport is. Right, you know, you hear about guys fighting each other. <laughs> you hear about two high-level British fighters fighting each other, and then you find out that in a country with, 
you know, a great boxing fan base. The two guys are actually fighting in a different country. They're fighting in Riyadh or someplace like that. Not in the United Kingdom. That's how ridiculous boxing is. Right? Well, let me just tell you, folks, it's even more ridiculous than that. Be a skeptic. Don't believe these offers to fighters. Please, don't equate them with the offers that guys get in the NBA or the major leagues. I couldn't even imagine a Bryce Harper prepared to sign a contract and then they say, oh, Bryce, of course, you know, you have to win a World Series to make sure that you get to the third season of this deal, right? It, it, it's, you know, in boxing, I'm just telling you, these fighters have to win to get all the benefits of the deals they sign. They're at the mercy of the promoter in many cases as to how often they fight. Let me also say too, fighters don't think of this. They should. How easy is it to find their fights? Right? I can tell you, I signed up for a big fight. It was Floyd Mayweather against Conor McGregor. Right? That was going to be my entertainment that day. Then, of course, you know, they had some funky setup where I was using some service that I, you know, had never used before. And, of course, I missed rounds of that fight. In other words, I'm in front of the TV. Right? I'm there. I'm ready. I've paid. And I missed rounds of that fight and they gave me something for it I believe I got a, a hat or something that was ridiculous for a fight that cost a lot of money right and I missed parts of that fight right understand these promoters aren't all on the same platform you have to make sure that you know you the fan actually get access to your favorite fighters when they sign these deals and they end up on these platforms that nobody has. Right? It's different than it was in the 70s. I, I can tell you, without even looking it up, I saw Ali against Leon Spinks, one of, the, one of the biggest fights of the 1970s, their first fight. It was on network TV. Right? I saw Ernie Shavers against Ken Norton. That was on network TV. I saw Ronaldo Snipes against Larry Holmes. That was on network TV, a heavyweight title fight. Right? All I had to do back then was turn on the TV, turn the dial. Yes, TVs used to have dials. Turn the dial to the station, sit down and watch it. After the fight, all my friends saw the fight. I'd show up at school, everyone saw the fight. This wasn't the kind of setup where, you know, friends said, hey man, I want to see that fight, but I don't have that streaming service. Right? This wasn't that setup. Like it is now. So fighters need to think about when they are signing with promoters, hey man, how many people are watching the promoter's streaming service. Right? How many fights has this promoter actually delivered to the other fighters in their stable who have multi-fight deals? Right? Am I going to look up my own profile on Boxing Rec and see the word inactive next to my name when I'm trying to be an active fighter? Right, so all I can say is don't fall in love with media reports about five fight, $15 million deals. The devil is in the details. Right, I don't want fans following Shakur Stevenson around and saying, why didn't you take the $15 million deal? Because that deal may not have had a $15 million guarantee. 
right? Those are the things people need to think about, right? That's just the way the sport is. It does not have a boxers association as strong as the NFL players association. As strong as the Major League Baseball Players Association, the NBA's Players Association. Right? Boxing isn't there yet. These $15 million deals might not have the word guaranteed next to them. Right? Let me point out, too, Shakur Stevenson, I'm sure he's looking at a Tank Davis. And he's thinking to himself, man, you know, Tank's making a lot of money. I'm sure he looks at other fighters, looks at the gates that they announce. And he's thinking to himself, man, I was an Olympic medalist. I'm unbeaten today. Right? How does my $3 million compare to what Ryan Garcia made against Tank Davis? Right, folks? it might not compare. Right? Let's give the fighters a break here. These media reports have a lot of air in them at times. Boxing fans really don't know what to think when they hear that a fighter was offered $15 million for five fights. They don't know enough about the gates at other fights. They don't know enough about the replay rights that the fighter is giving away. Right? Some of these streaming services are spectacular for fans like me because I'm able to just click on all these historical fights. Understand, the fighters give away rights so that these streaming services can then have their great fights in perpetuity. Right? So, just remember, Derek White is making more per year than the entire promised upside that Shakur Stevenson was going to make over five fights in the offer he turned down from top rank. Right? Let's give Stevenson a break. Let's not assume we know enough about the finances in boxing to reach the conclusion on whether Stevenson was walking away from a financial bonanza. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Understand, I have no inside information. None whatsoever. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Thanks for stopping by.